Hi guys and welcome to TechBased. In this video, we're going to talk about the latest Windows 11 Insider preview build for the Canary channel, which is the build 26040, the latest build for version 23H2. It is a bigger build with a lot of new features. And in this video, we're going to try to cover them all and see what is new, if it is exciting or not, and other stuff. If you enjoy videos like these, please don't forget to leave a like below and also subscribe to the TechBased channel with the notification bell activated so that you won't miss any future uploads like this one. These things being said, let's begin with the video. First First of all, you need to know that Microsoft is releasing ISOs for this build. So just go into the official Microsoft website. You're going to have more info in the article below in the video description. Select the edition, for example, the latest build for the Canary channel, and then confirm. After that, you're going to have to select the product language, for example, English United States, confirm, and the ISO should be offered to you. First of all, Microsoft is introducing new ways to instantly access new photos and screenshots from your mobile device, and also the ability to edit them really easily using the Snipping Tool app. Basically, this new feature has a new notification that you can access through the phone link app of course and you can enable this using the settings app and going into bluetooth and devices and then mobile devices and then of course you're going to have to connect your phone to windows 11 using phone link you're also going to have a new interface to help you manage mobile devices i think that is pretty nice microsoft is also expanding voice clarity and it's making it available to more people this is a feature that enhances your audio experience on windows with state-of-the-art ai technology and i think this is pretty useful. You're going to see more info about this in the article below if you're interested in that. Microsoft is also updating the Windows setup experience. You're going to see on the screen the new Windows setup and they are basically refreshing the Windows OS media setup with a much cleaner and more modern design. All the same features will continue to be supported in the clean OS installation experience including unintended support but will now be consistent with the current upgrade and installation experience available for the devices already running the Windows OS. So basically if you're installing Windows from this ISO, the Build 26040, you're going to be able to encounter this new setup that Microsoft is currently trying out. Microsoft is also announcing the new USB 80 gigabits standard, which is a new standard for the latest generation USB, and this will initially launch on select devices based on the Intel Core 14th Gen HX series mobile processors, such as the new Razer Blade 18. Related to Narrator, Microsoft is introducing an enhanced image consumption experience, and they are introducing a new keyboard command for navigating between the images on the screen page, and also recognition of text and images, including handwriting. This is also improved along with improvements to overall image description. Microsoft is also adding numerous improvements to the Narrator app. For example, in Microsoft Word, this will announce the presence of a draft comment, a resolve comment, a bookmark, and more. And also certain issues with the Narrator were fixed, but if you want to see the whole list of that, you can check out the article below. Microsoft is also improving the discoverability of screencasting in Windows 11, which will basically help you organize your screen space. And also, they updated the cast flyout and quick settings with additional support for you in case you face any trouble discovering nearby displays. Microsoft is also improving the Windows Local Administrator Password Solution with a new automatic account management feature, improved readability password dictionary and improved password font, new passphrase feature, new image rollback detection feature, and more. Of course, about all of these, you can check out the article below if you want to see an in-depth presentation of those. As mentioned, with the build 26020, WordPad is removed when doing a clean install and now is also removed on upgrade starting with this build, so RIP WordPad. Microsoft is also testing a change where the Copilot icon is shown on the right side of the system tray. Of course, we've tested this out before on the channel, and they are also changing the way the show the desktop button works, and this can be changed inside taskbar settings. When you hover over the date and time in the system tray, the tooltip will now always show a clock even when you only have a single clock added. Regarding the File Explorer, in addition to the new compressed two formats for 7-zip and tar, Microsoft is adding a new compression wizard that lets you choose even more formats and specify even more details. So if we click on a file, we have compressed two, we have some new formats, zip, 7z, tar, and also additional options here. As you can see, this is pretty useful. And here you will be able to select the destination, the RHEF format, compression method, compression level, and so on. I think this is pretty useful and I'm really happy that Microsoft introduced this in Windows 11. Regarding Windows Share for Microsoft Edge and other browsers that invoke the Windows Share window, the Windows Share window now supports the ability to share websites links directly to WhatsApp, Gmail, Twitter, Facebook, and LinkedIn. And also in the Microsoft Edge, you can invoke the Window Share window by clicking the Share icon at the top right in the toolbar and choosing the Window Share options. Also, if you're signing in with a Microsoft Intro ID, in addition to being able to share to your Microsoft Teams contacts, you can also now share directly to specific Microsoft Teams channels and group chats. They also improved the nearby share transfer speed for users on the same network. I think that is pretty nice. In this build, Microsoft also 
also updated the task manager icon. As you can see, we now have a new task manager icon. I saw on Twitter that some users love it, some users don't, but in my opinion, it's nice. It's good to see something new in Windows 11. We also have some improvements related to input. They added the Colmac keyboard layout, and they also added a new Hebrew keyboard layout. Microsoft also fixed an issue in Magnifier settings page where the text below voice speed slider was not following the color contrast guidelines. Also, if we go into the settings app, then system and then sound, and then we go and select a microphone, for example, from the input section, we're going to see some new improved microphone testing section, which also has a test mode for microphone audio processing. This was discovered by Phantom Ocean through on Twitter, and this most likely is related to the audio clarity feature, which will use AI to improve your audio quality. Also, something pretty interesting discovered by Abacor on Twitter, Microsoft is working on a complete rework of the taskbar thumbnail control, which will feature some new animations, and I think that is pretty interesting. Shout out to Albacore on Twitter for this find. Microsoft is also adding a automatic display switch setting, which currently doesn't work. This is basically in the testing zone, and it has the options use default settings on and off. I think this is pretty useful, and we're testing this in the settings system display and graphics. This was also discovered by Phantom Machine 3. We also have some new updates for the live captions UI, and as you can see, now we have a new UI, which uh, looks pretty good in my opinion, even when we change the language. Nice animations, rounded corners, a nice translucent background. I think it's looking pretty good. Also in system power and battery, some icons were changed from here. These are some small changes. And also the icons from the system tray related to power and battery were updated by Microsoft. A change also discovered by Phantom Mission 3. Let's now talk about a few fixes. Microsoft fixed an issue causing settings to not launch for a small number of insiders on build 26010 plus. They also fixed a high hitting print spooler crash in the last two builds. Fixed an issue where hovering over the system tray area wasn't bringing out the taskbar when set to auto hide. Fixed an issue causing some users to see an increase in system thread exception not handled bug checks recently. Fixed an issue causing some insiders to see a bug check with bad pull color in build 26016. Fixed an underlying issue related to scroll bars which was causing some app crashes in the last two builds. Made a change to help fix an issue which could cause the spacing between your desktop icons to become extremely wide. Fixed the issue in widgets where announcements from the Microsoft start feed are still shown on the taskbar after the feed is hidden, fixed the issue in widgets where spacing and fonts used in some settings pages were incorrect. And we also have a very important known issue related to gamers. Some popular games may not work correctly and cause a bug check green screen when launched on the most recent insider preview builds in the Canary channel. Of course, if you're on the Canary channel, hopefully you're not gaming on that machine. If you also want to see the whole list of known issues in this build, you can check out the article below. So basically, this was the build for the Canary channel. It's a pretty exciting build, a huge one, and with a lot of new features. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to leave a like below and also subscribe to the TechBase channel with the notification bell activated so that you won't miss any future uploads like this one. I was Emmanuel from TechBase. Until next time, have a nice day.